Welcome back to Tech Tip Tuesday. I'm Steve Dynan, CEO of Carbon. I'm Jeff Westfall, Lead Driver Product Strategist. Our next few uh, videos are going to be on suspension theory and suspension geometry, one of my favorite subjects. Uh, and today we're going to start with camber. So basically what camber is, is the tilt of the tire. As you go outward at the top, that's positive camber. And we go the other way, that's negative camber. Okay, BMW puts a little bit of negative camber into your car and we're going to go into why that is. So in addition to the static camber, which is the fixed camber that BMW puts in the car. When you say static, like the car parked. Car parked. It's not moving, it's sitting yeah. there. Yeah. Yep. And we give it some negative camber. And the reason we do that, so when the car rolls, with the tire then becomes flat and we pick up traction. And it rolls in a cornering event. So Correct. I'm driving into a corner at 50 miles an hour. Yeah. I turn the wheel and the car leans the opposite way. That's the roll you're talking about. That's the roll I'm talking about, yeah. Now there's also what's called camber change curve or geometric correction for roll. So the upper wishbone is shorter than the lower wishbone. It's also at a different angle. So that when the car rolls in a corner, it actually gains negative camber to help compensate for the roll. Or if you hit a bump or there's a vertical movement, the wheel moves inward or gains camber as it goes up. Well, that's the negative part. Correct. Yeah, so, so uh, we could theoretically, if a car rolled six degrees, give it six degrees of camber correction so that the tire would always be flat. But the problem is, is what you alluded to, when you hit a bump, then it moves another six degrees. And then you have 12. Right, then you have 12 and that's, the car spits off the road. That's way too much. That's and way too much. For reference, 12 is probably like, <laughs> yeah. like this. Yeah, right. It's a bit much. It's a lot. So what we do is we give it a little bit of camber correction, but not so much that it doesn't become unstable over bumps and lift the tire off the ground. Right. And then we also give it a little bit of static camber to help the geometric change. So the combination of two gets the tire as close to flat on the road as possible when corner. And just thinking logically here. Yeah. I would guess that every car doesn't have the same camber change curve. That's a fact. And so if you're going to do a setup or you're going to tune your vehicle, you probably need to know what the geometric camber rate is so that you don't set a static camber rate that's way out of the window. Yes. And upper and lower wishbone cars have a faster camber change curve than a strut car, which is why really, really high end exotic cars always have upper and lower Wish wishbones bones. and why Indy cars and Formula One cars and everything has that. So yeah. Uh, Struts are typically made for cost or packaging reasons to save space. Yep. Um, you know, they also do what they call a multi-link, which is like a five-link rear suspension system, which has toe and camber changes, but we're not gonna get that no, complicated no, okay. today. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get the tire flat on the road when you corner. So basically the car company puts in the right amount of static camber and camber change curve for your average driver. Or tire wear. And, and also considering tire wear, take yep. on the inside edge. If you give it too much static camber, then you're running on the inside edge. Correct. It also follows ruts so and makes it's your a car compromise of all. It's a compromise of all. If you're an enthusiast, we assume you are, you wouldn't be here. You're That's probably right. driving faster than the average person. Yep. So that means you need more static negative camber. Yep. More this direction. Right. So because you're going to corner more, and if you don't, you're going to wear tires on the outside edge, like the one that just came off my 2025 M5. Um, I wore it down on the shoulder on the outside because that is completely stock suspension, stock geometry, stock static camber because we haven't done any modification to it yet. And then yep. 6,000 miles I corded the tires uh, from driving it around corners because that's the way I drive. <laughs> I have info from a very reliable source. It's actual multiple sources. Uh, factory alignment settings lasted 20 minutes on a racetrack. All four tires were junk. Yeah. 45 minutes later, the brakes were smoked. Yes. Well, it's a street car. Yeah. And it's, a, it's designed to be driven on the highway every day Correct. and going back and forth to work. So the problem with running a lot of static negative camber is then we wear tires on the inside edge. So if you don't drive fast a fair amount of time, then you wind up with inside edge wear. Which is unrealistic for a road car that's going to do dual purpose, right? So you yeah. need to find a blend in the middle. Yeah, I'm an unusual person. I always wear my tires on the outside edge, even with negative camber more than the inside edge. I also wear my motorcycle tires more on the edge than the center as well, but <laughs> I'm not normal. <laughs> That's why I do this for a living. Uh, anyway, um, basically if you drive faster, you need to add more negative camber. Now just lowering your car, because the geometry curve we talked about the camber gain, yep. just lower your car adds about a half degree all the way around. Yep. So you can wind up with a car that's lowered, it looks better, and also stiffer springs, which is also gonna help our situation. In order to help, compensate for better grip tires or wider tires and we make the suspension stiffer it will roll less yep adding grip actually makes it roll more so Correct. if you put big wheels and tires on that are sticky and you don't do anything suspension stiffness you actually wind up with more on the edge of the tire yep 
and less on the contact patch, which makes it kind of defeats the purpose of buying the wheels and tires. The adhesion of the tire is what you feel as a driver. When you're behind the wheel and you feel the grip and the car's responsive, that as that adhesion goes up, whether it's a better compound or a wider tire, both of which are gonna make the car roll more because it has more friction to fight against. Yes. Yeah, and, and that's what you're trying to get is more cornering speed, but if you get a wider tire and then it rolls more, you wind up on the shoulder, then you defeat some of that. Then you don't have enough camber. Then you don't have enough camber, right, <laughs> exactly. Now you can also add a, a camber uh, adjustable device in the front of the car. The rear of the car has camber adjustability from, from the car company. Why they make the rear camber adjustable, not the front camber adjustable, I've never understood, but that's just the way it is. Thanks for joining us today. We're gonna have more about suspensions in the next few videos. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to our videos so you don't miss any. And you can check out all of our camber and suspension components on carbon.com or go to one of our 85 installers nationwide.